cheaters never prosper. Or do they? Howdy everyone, my name is SK Pac-Man and I've recently spent some time scouring through the internet and gaming history and I can definitively say, yes, cheaters do prosper. The Konami Code, for instance, a classic example of what I'm talking about, you suck at Contra. You're running out of lives, either get good, give up, or get even. You enter the code and boom, an extra 30 lives. The day is saved. You can continue gaming, knowing the game devs got your back. Unlocking weapons, infinite lives, big heads, infinite ammo, changing the fundamental landscape around you, invincibility, the list goes on. You don't have to ruin your fun by grinding to get godlike at a game, you just need a little boost to get you through and complete the story. You can seemingly do anything you wanted, as long as the developers coded it into the game. But that is the limitation. In the bygone era of retro consoles, you had no choice but to use the tools the developers saw fit to give you. You couldn't mold the game to your liking, bending the code to your will. Th that is, until hardware-based code injection came along. Enter the Game Genie. Released by Galoob in 1990 for the NES, it was the first widely available hardware device that could allow you to break games in new and interesting ways, without having to memorize button codes. This thing came with a book of thousands of codes, tailor-made for enhancing your gaming experience. Nintendo being Nintendo initially tried to sue Galoob into stopping production, but after that failed and Nintendo's appeal was denied, United States federal courts ruled in favor of Galoob, cementing the Game Genie's legality and steadily growing popularity. The cheaters, in fact, prospered. The Game Genie wasn't just a novelty, it paved the way for a future cheat devices and set a precedent for how games could be modified. Fast forward to modern day, there are all kinds of cheats everywhere. With the advent of PC gaming in the late 1980s and early 1990s, came a whole new way to interface with your gaming experience to get exactly what you want out of it. Moreover, everyday people were learning how to make games themselves. My dad made some fun text-based adventure games in DOS when I was a kid. Good times. The rise of PC gaming meant you could use external programs while the game was running to modify your game's memory live without any extra hardware. Today's version of that would be Cheat Engine. PC gaming also opened up the world to expansions, mods, and technological advances in gaming hardware and software that would evolve faster than any industry to date. And with PC gaming came the internet. Online games were booming and people wanted to get an unfair advantage there too. These cheaters never prosper. I'm only gonna say this once, and I hate that it comes with this territory. Cheating in online games is bad. Don't do it, ever. Counter-Strike, Apex Legends, Fortnite, all of these shooters, especially Battle Royale style games, they all have one thing in common. Cheaters. While bending your single player game to your will is all in good fun and only affects your own game, hacking a multiplayer online game to gain an unfair advantage is against every online game's user agreement. It ruins the experience for other players and will get you banned. And depending on the severity, you can have even more serious consequences. I don't want to see Thor come after you for being a cheating douche nozzle. Not every game will like it when you try to cheat, though. Some famous or infamous examples of this are The Serious Room and Stanley Parable, where if the game detects you've enabled server cheats, you get kicked to this room. And Kevin Brighting will scold you until you turn it back off. GTA 5. Max Payne 3, Arma 3, Fall Guys, Titanfall, they all had their own versions of a cheater island. Some would put all of the cheaters in a pool or make them face off against each other. But those are all multiplayer games. What about single player? Banjo-Kazooie would erase your game saves. Batman Arkham Asylum would disable your glide ability. The list goes on. Clearly, some developers don't want their game messed with. Most of these devs claim it's to deter people from ruining the experience. Some developers embrace these modifications and will actively give players a way to modify their games. Whether it's Steam Workshop or third-party mod injections, there are ways to enhance your game without risking breaking something, 
by using verified and tested community mods. These can do much more than just enable some cheats. For example, in Lethal Company, there are quality of life enhancements that are widely available that make tallying your loot easier, selling and buying faster, community-made maps and monsters. It's a net good for the whole community. These same modifications can be made in the name of accessibility. While some game developers have accessibility in mind, not all do. Charities like Able Gamers are fighting for disabled gamers across the world to have equal and equitable access to gaming, enhancing their quality of life. Some of the best players in the world are disabled and are amazing personalities online. These modifications allow for games that don't have accessibility options to include stuff like colorblind mode, adding options for third-party controllers, text-to-speech for sight-impaired, subtitle options for hearing-impaired, and much more. Cheating, hacking, scripts, and modifications are about more than just getting a few extra gold in Peglin or maxing out your money in Balatro. It's about leveling the playing field so we can all enjoy the games the way we want to. Being an engineer by day, I have a naturally inquisitive mind. I enjoy games differently than most people. I pick them apart, really soak myself in the lore, and I explore far outside the boundaries that the developers have set for me because I'm genuinely interested in how it was made. There are entire channels here on YouTube that have dedicated themselves to exploring games this way and are making it big doing it. Some of my favorites are Horror Scoped, She Says, Let's Game It Out, and Urtias. There are many more out there. These are just a prime example. Horror Scoped picks apart games and shows interesting bits that happen off camera, behind the scenes, and has fun in the process. Jesus has a series named Boundary Break where they pick apart games in an interesting and fully narrative way. Very entertaining. While Josh at Let's Game It Out doesn't traditionally use hacks or cheats to break the game, he has a knack for breaking games using their own mechanics against them in some of the most entertaining videos I've ever seen on YouTube. Urtiez is a special case. Years ago I gave him some training on how to hack games starting with Benny and the Ink Machine. The Easter Egg Sinny, or Wandering is a Terrible Sin, was birthed from me sharing my original hacking video with the developers. I'd like to think it's my Easter Egg, but it's for the wider hacking audience. Urtiez took that idea and ran with it, massively growing his channel in the process. I'm glad to see he's still having fun with what I taught him. I've also delved into this world. There's a playlist linked to the description of all the videos I've made of hacking games. These are all examples of cheaters prospering and sharing their experience in the process. So, do cheaters really prosper? In many ways they do, but it's not a black and white issue. Cheating and hacking in games has evolved from mere shortcuts to intricate tools that can enhance the gaming experience, bring new perspectives, and even level the playing field for those who face real-life challenges. Ultimately, it's about balance and respect. Embrace the tools that enhance your gaming experience, but always consider the impact of your actions on the broader gaming community. This video is my first foray into video essays, so if you enjoy this kind of content, hit the like button. I primarily make gameplay videos, so if you want to stick around and see what else I have cooking, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment, let me know if I missed anything, if you have any pointers for how to make this kind of content better, or just say hi. At the time of recording, I have a little under 4,000 subscribers, so I see and respond to every comment. Happy hacking! I'll see you next time.